Uh, yesterday we were talking about uh, how a writer or someone who became a writer, how the same organizing principle could move someone to murder or uh, to uh, become, you know, uh, the most successful writer by some measures in, in history, uh, which was St. Paul, that, that uh, uh, attaching his faith to an idea that uh, God was uh, himself affiliated with a particular group ultimately rationalized uh, the commission of murder. Uh, that by a, that, that if, in other words, if you give yourself to logic as an organizing principle, um, the rigors of logic can lead you by very logical steps to some pretty strange destinations. Uh, uh, Paul's reasoning was uh, the prophets had said uh, the Messiah uh, will come to the Jews. And when the Messiah comes, it will be the end of days. Now think of this as writers as your allegiance to an outline, okay? I made the outline, I'm sticking to it, okay? And I believe in my outline. So here's the outline. Uh, the Messiah is going to come back to earth for the Jewish people. So far, I'm with him. Uh, when he comes, it will be the end of days. Jesus came proclaiming himself the Messiah. Where's the end of days? He must not have been a Messiah. Anyone, therefore, proclaiming that he is the Messiah is doing the work of the devil. If he's doing the work of the devil, he needs to be iced. Send me in, coach. Because allegiance to the outline um, can, if, if what you're really looking for is approval from power, you can go any place. Uh, now, what freed Paul from? Uh, so he, so he killed. So he, uh, because Paul had talent, and he had conviction. Uh, and uh, one way or another, if you're brave enough, when somebody asks you what you do, if you say I'm a writer. Um, whether or not you believe it, and most brave people don't, uh, you're brave, and you have some conviction. Uh, whether you have uh, talent, you know, we don't know each other that well at the moment, but, but uh, I will tell you that Ezra Pound once said, for every writer who fails for lack of talent, a thousand fail for lack of character. So let's, uh, you're here, you have good taste. I'm going to believe you have talent. And we know you're brave. So let's examine the question of how Paul got from murder where he, he and you know, if, uh, he was a big murderer, you know. I mean, he killed the first. Uh, he, uh, uh, he he killed one of the twelve apostles. You can get jammed up for that. Uh, uh, Saint Stephen, and uh, and then the bosses said, 
you know, today is a great thing. I'm watching the, uh, the, the, the findings of the Mitchell investigation about st the use of steroids in, in baseball. They tried to give the part to Claude Rains, but then they found out he was dead. You know, when Claude Rains comes out, he says, there's gambling in the back of this institution. Uh, the, the uh, um, you know, uh, there was a big strike in baseball. Interesting. We're on strike. And, uh, uh, and the people felt it was quite a betrayal. Uh, and and uh, that type of conviction is available to you when your chosen Jones isn't, right? You feel betrayed. Where's the dealer, for Christ's sake? You can't rely on this cocksucker. He said he was going to be on the corner at 2.30. Well, most dealers are also users. Anyways, uh, so that was a digression upon a digression, wasn't it? Um, so here in the steroid investigation, so, so, so after the strike is settled, now they want people back in the ballparks. All the athletes start using dope, start using steroids, you know, to pump themselves up. All of a sudden, people are hitting 60 home runs, 70 home runs. Now the owners know what's going on. It wouldn't surprise, I mean, the guys who were selling the steroids were all the, the clubhouse guys. You know, and the clubhouse guys uh, weighed on average 375 pounds, previously weighing 112. It's Claude Rains, right? So now attendance goes through the roof, all the records are broken, and it's getting a little embarrassing. You know, Barry Bonds... It uh, goes from a size six and a quarter to a size 17 head. And uh, the owners say, no, I haven't uh, noticed anything. Do you feel his head is bigger? Uh, because they're making a fucking fortune, right? Now it gets so bad that, you know, people are looking to give up the athletes because they can earn. You know, they can earn by giving them up. So they give them up, and now the owners have to say, after all this time, what, what, how could we have missed it? You know, 15 years, Mitchell says. It's been rampant. He says, I am not convinced that it was used by more than, a, by more than half of the players. Uh, so now they outlaw it today. And they name names, but they say... Uh, we don't believe anyone should be punished because we believe we should look forward. So what they're saying is we got ours, right? Now, the one guy who's, who's, who's going to get punished, unless someone is, uh, has a little impulse towards justice, is the guy whose head, whose hat size swole up because he's a black man who was not very obsequious to white people. And there are certain sins we forgive and certain sins we don't. But that was a digression, wasn't it? So here's Paul, and uh, uh, the same logic which has moved him to murder, because what? Because he wants to be part of, in a fashion not dissimilar from the writer who wants to be part of the bosses. He wants to be inside the temple like the priests, you know, in Jerusalem. And he wants to be inside the temple so bad that he will do things that the priests have to disavow. Um, so he whacks this guy. He says, listen to the priests. You said th this, this is the deal. If, if, if Christ was a Messiah, it should be the end of days. It's not the end of days. These people are full of shit, right? Don't you want me to go after them? Well, yes and no, Paul. We're all making a good dollar here. Let's be candid. Can't we be a little broad-minded about this? I have an idea. They are berserk. The Christians are berserk in Damascus. Fuck them up. Go fuck them up. So he goes, he says, you know, I'm a little lonely on the road here. Uh, and whatever 
we were saying yesterday, strange uh, circulatory uh, uh, or wiring problems he had uh, in his noggin. You know, he had a seizure, he hears Christ's voice, and he goes in a different direction. The voice said, open your heart. The voice said, uh, I, this voice you hear, am available to everyone. And you will be my vessel. You will tell, you will convey that message. And you'll convey it in all different ways. But it's going to be the same idea over and over and over again with very good examples. That's all writing is. The same idea over and over and over again with very good examples. The idea is the idea that Paul was promulgating, which is that all things are expressions of the same divinity. All things. And one way he said it was to the Jew and also to the Gentile. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you some other ways he said it. Uh, and, and believe me, I, I am a believer in the Baha'i faith. You don't have to worry I'm going to try and uh, convert you to anybody. What is the Baha'i faith? <laughs> hey, you want to hear a funny story about that? You know, I say, I believe in it. What is it? Uh, Simpson and Bruckheimer. Uh, I had begun to do uh, pretty well there in television, which is a fallen medium, as we know. But uh, they write quick. These guys can write quick. So Simpson and Bruckheimer hire me to fix a, a script. And they're, they're taking me into the temple. They're showing me around a little bit. Uh, and uh, they say, you know, do you want to see the trailer for Crimson Tide? Because it's going to be big going to be big. Now, there are some competing impulses going on here. Uh, I don't want to have to talk to these guys too long. I want to get loaded. I want the money because they're paying me in a paper bag, which is how the agent, you know, they say, he's idiosyncratic that way, Dave. <laughs> you know? Um, I don't want to have to fucking see the trailer for Crimson Tide, you know? <laughs> At first they show me first they show me the, this table with the thing the V that come becomes one where they bang the whores simultaneously, you know, and the lightning. And I said, Jesus Christ. Whoa, that's fabulous. And you leave the come right right on the desk. And yeah, now we have someone who comes in and uh, so, uh but Crimson Tide I don't want to see Crimson. So I says, I'll, now, by way of not having to see it, I tell these guys, uh, I'll tell you something. I don't, I, be, I, because I want to get right to work on a script. I want to get right to work on the fix. But I'm going to say this to you. Nobody but you guys would have the balls to do that story. And God bless you for using your power toward a good. You know, to have... Uh, a lot of people uh, say, oh, oh, the Alabama football coach and the first black quarterback. Because they said, you know, Gene is great in it and Denzel is great in it. <laughs> now I know what it's about. Alabama is called the Crimson Tide, the football team. Right? I don't want to have to see the fucking trailer. So I say the balls that you have, an interracial thing like that, and the integrating athletics and it. and they're looking at me they said it's a submarine movie <laughs> I said please you know you guys are famous for a wonderful sense of humor and I hope you realize you can take a little bit of a gag a little bit of a joke <laughs> so <laughs> they so the the uh the idea of uh, this one message um, to recur to our topic uh, of 
the, the exact same impulse, a yearning to be part of, to be made use of, a desire to believe, sometimes at the cost of uh, a purity of vision, that the keepers of the temple must be out for good, uh, can lead you to commit murder. Same guy. Or to rather a dip. Now, you know how, you know how Paul proselytized? Now, uh, uh, first he did it in person. He would go to different places. After, because after Damascus, they didn't want him in Damascus either. So he'd sail or he'd ride or whatever the fuck he did. And uh, he would show up, and because Christ had said first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. So the first thing he would do is go to the temple, and he would get the shit kicked out of him in every community. And then he would go out among the Gentiles, and he would deliver this message that salvation is available to everyone who confess Christ crucified, which is simply to say that God submits himself to suffer in the appearance of man, that man may recognize God's presence. And he's converting them left and right. You talk about I Love Lucy doing well. Everywhere he goes, it's a complete change. Then after he goes, because after all he's a writer, and after he is in the spirit with the people, you know, after he's doing his work, and, and he's good, and he... Oh, let me read you this. That was what I was going to do. Uh, Corinthians, Corinthians, you cocksucker. Uh, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries, law and order, CSI, <laughs> and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could move mountains and have not charity, I'm nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Even Dick Wolf. My God, with all that that man has accomplished, it profiteth him nothing. Well, what's he doing with all that money? I've asked him for it repeatedly. but Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not, charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Now let me stop for a second. Pretty good writing, isn't it? Just as writing. It's pretty good writing. And if you were, say, if you were a musician or something, you say, oh, my brother is on a roll. Or my brother is saying something. And that sense of, now, uh, uh, being on a roll allows us to infer that the excellence of the message is based on the principles of association of its components. Now go back, I'm going to go back, and we think that we would like to, th don't go anywhere with that baby. That's music, okay? Please, don't, don't worry about nothing. Um, the... the we think, oh, it's the content of what he's saying. And because we hate, because of all our experiences of religion, we think, yeah, 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 it's very good, very good. It's very, uh, very good thinking, very good thinking. But that ain't what's going on. It is the juxtaposition 
of things and the way that one begets the next until finally it becomes a, a we have a sense of the comprehensiveness of what is being said by its rhythms and juxtapositions. I will tell you later in this uh, conversation or in another one that content tests and verifies the implicit assumptions of form. And Paul's religious vision affirms at the level of content the perfection of the communication which he accomplishes because he has given his soul to God. As a guy that did a murder, folks, that's a serious thing. And let me tell you something. The first murder is always the toughest. I suppose that's funny. Uh, once you start, you know, uh, you can get on that kind of roll too. And he stopped. And let, let me go on now and, and feel the music. Feel the music at the level of form even a, 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 as your heart is lifted up by the content. Charity doth not behave itself unseemly, and it sometimes is translated as love. Seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth, endureth all things. Now, think of the Big Bang and the billowings that came forth from whatever that initial source of energy was and the way it spun as well as it drove. And listen to watch this cloud get bigger of language. Feel it get bigger. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily uh, provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see as through a glass, darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abideth, abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Now, among other things, if you give your heart to the encounter with those words, you will know how to write. Because the principle of associate, because Paul had given himself to logic and it led him to murder. But the principle of association, remember yesterday I was saying the idea that the, any idea which is based on subject object relationships, I and it, uh, the thinker and the thought, must ultimately generate logic as its organizing principle and must be wrong. And logic murders faith. That's why I don't use an outline. Because an outline is an expression of fear and I must trust that the Spirit will move with me. Uh, I know what it is to murder and to want to be in the temple. And uh, I've been blessed uh, to 
who have heard the voice asking why I persecuted them. Every writer does. The trick is to train yourself to listen. Now, how do, how do we do that? Um, you're here, aren't you? Red Bull, it's a stimulant. We're friends. We can be candid with each other. It's a stimulant. Oh, sure, I say it's a health drink. But no one pays any attention to me anyway. Um, you're here as an act of faith. Could be one of the reasons you're here. You could also be here as an exercise in logic. Well, what does he, you know, he says he's going to present ideas for a series. There could be work here. There could be money here. There could be admission to the temple here. Uh, if you ha entertain any impurity of motive, that's your ticket of admission. And the energy released by accepting the purifying effect of the rhythms and juxtapositions of association which are not merely linguistic, but are also experiential, uh, can purify the nature of your connection to your art. Isn't that something? That's a good idea, isn't it? Um, now, we're on strike. I don't want to get fucked up. Uh, and so I'm doing this so that I can be with my brothers and sisters. Because only by works can I cohabit with my faith. And we're going to uh, set out here on a little bit of a project. Um, and impurity of motive is going to be our, all those seemingly empty seats, that's impurity of motive. And every one of them, invisible, omnipresent, continuous, ooh, you shitbird, impurity of motive. And I see them. See, you think this, uh, we're about 25% occupancy. I see them every place because I bring them with me. Um, now, uh, Here's one of the things that separates, that, the, the, that seems to make this subject an object, right? As you experience me, well, he's very smart, but he's very wacky. And somehow, that's why he's making the big bucks, and I'm not. So I have to sort of listen to him. I have to kind of slit the envelope of his wackiness, extract whatever it is, cohabits with his wackiness, make an outline, <laughs> and take it to NBC. Uh, I'm going to give you an idea. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you one. Is Scott here? Scott Shepard? You're not Scotch. That man's an imposter. That I will not countenance. Get him the fuck. Oh, it, oh, sorry. Scott Wilson, my assistant. I guess he's not here. Uh, I, that's somebody I see at the racetrack. I see him at the racetrack a lot. And uh, the, it, uh, who helped me yesterday? Is that person here who helped me yesterday when I forgot and I said, what was I talking about? And they raised their hand. Are you here? Is that you? Look how, look how timid she is. She's one of those helpful people who keeps a low profile. What's your name? Juan. Juan? 
Um, would you stand up for a sec so I can thank you? Now, isn't that an uncomfortable experience for you, Juan? Be, not too bad. And it gets better every second that goes by, right? Because you feel the nice feelings that people have. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. And uh, the reason that I asked about you was because, you know, uh, don't you worry about me? Sustaining my train of thought. <laughs> Don't you think to yourself, uh, oh man, it's, uh, obviously he doesn't have long. <laughs> and uh, I only hope that Christ he gives out the story ideas. <laughs> now, Here's a paradox. Um, how many writers do you know that you pull for? You hate them all, don't you? <laughs> it's nice to pull for another writer, isn't it? And the reason you're pulling for me is because I'm operating on faith. I ain't working from an outline. And you feel my vulnerability and the tenuousness of my hold on the organizing principle of my presentation. And you try to help me to sustain the organization of my presentation. That's structure. Enlisting the energy of the viewer so that rather than opposing it and saying, okay, here was the crime, 10.14 p.m., Wellesley College, dut, 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 whatever that music is that they have, <laughs> dut, dut, the chambers of the judge, dut, 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 dut. Uh, structure's going to give you everything. And uh, you say, oh, you know, I'll, I'll tell you why I like it. I like it because even though the names of the series are different, it's really the same show. And uh, the seeming uh, uh, difficulty of accessing the past, that's taken care of. All of a sudden, whoosh, the camera, it's CSI. Do you ever see that? Well, we were having a beef, and whoosh, now we're back in the past, and we get to see the beef. Judges' chambers, lawyers' chambers, perpetrators' chambers, and now a different show, Crime and Punishment, the judge, the jury, and the cleaning person. <laughs> NBC, heroes, uh, the journeyman, the past, the future, the promise, the di all of which is, is to say... Uh, Relax. <laughs> We're going to give it to you. And the beauty is you can do your laundry. It used to be you worried if you missed it, but we're on pretty much continuously, <laughs> one channel or another. And I'll tell you what's fun. Take the last act of CSI, put it in the middle of law and order. <laughs> Take cops... So uh, that's where an outline. Um, but faith, as Paul discovered, was generated uh, by the willing submission in all of our imperfection. Uh, juxtaposed with an announcement of the, uh, of, of, the, uh, of, of the deepest sense that my identity is fulfilled only in my relationship to you. And the reason for that is because we are not actually separate. So that when I ask Juan, when I ask anyone, can you help me? Uh... Juan so beautifully reminded me 
of where I was. And didn't you feel great afterwards? At a certain point, the observer's energy, to the, the observer become, goes outside of herself and also feels a part of. Now, I was talking to you yesterday about we feel that way about our children, we feel that way about our pets, but how about feeling that way about the world? That at some level, the world is our home. That all of us have some sort of mystic connection, which is testified to rhythmically, conceptually, but all of these elements simultaneous rather than logical and sequential. 